Hi folks, I'm Don Meisner, and I'm here on Tupper Lake, the beginning of an incredible fish stocking day. But it's not just any normal fish stocking. Today the DEC is putting 10,000 lake trout and 3,000 landlocked salmon in this lake. And there's a number of volunteers here with their boats to help them so they get these fish dispersed and they also get them to the deep water first where they're going to have a lot better chance of survival. You know, this lake is beautiful. But what a lot of people don't realize is it's a fantastic fishing lake. It's not just these lakers and these landlocks that are in here. There's all kinds of warm water fish here as well, like walleyes and northern pike and bass. And in my mind, if a person was taking a vacation to go fishing someplace, to have this as a backdrop, to be able to stay in this incredible part of the Adirondacks that Tupper Lake is situated in, is really a fishing dream come true. And I'm here with Jack Del Hende. And Jack, tell us a little bit, first of all, both of these species, a lot of people might not know too much, especially the landlocked salmon. Uh, what in particular can we pass on to people about this fish? its uh, appropriateness for this lake and what they need to know about how it's going to survive and if they can catch them. Uh, Tupper Lake's probably one of the better kept secrets in the Adirondacks with regard to the amount of forage base in it. Uh, we've got a smelt population here that's astronomical. There's not a place in deep water or over deep water in this lake that you can't mark smelt on your fish finder. And that's especially true after the thermocline sets up during the summer months, late July, August, and right into September. Um, landlocked salmon need smelt to live. It's their primary forage base. Um, after they go from eating insects on the surface, they go, when they're in a smolt stage, six inches to eight inches, uh, smelt is their primary food source. There's so many smelt in here, it's difficult to catch a fish. Is that right? There's so many smelt in here, every time you catch a fish of any size, six pounds or better, your boat's going to be a mess from both ends of the fish, whether it be a lake trout or a landlocked salmon. Because of regurgitating all the smelt? They, they regurgitate the smelt, and, and Donna, you know how filthy lake trout are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, for many years, the Department of Environmental Conservation had placed... Um, over 10,000 lake trout in here and for a while they stopped putting um, landlocked salmon in. Uh, through efforts of Rich Preel who recently retired uh, and Jonathan the new uh, person over at the Department of Environmental Conservation though it seems that um, they've come to a consensus that landlocked salmon um, are good to go in Tupper Lake and that Tupper is a worthy recipient of, uh, of that noble fish. More people, I think, who fish deep water with downriggers um, target um, landlocked salmon as their fish of choice on account of the great aerialists that they are, on account of the fight that they give you, and on account of the fact that you can't always bring them to the boat. Um, they'll shake off if they've got any size to them, so you really have to know what you're doing and it's something that gets your heart going. So, <laughs> Well, that, that's, that's the thing. That's what this is all about. It's about stimulating that excitement that doesn't come in a lot of places. And Tupper Lake has it all here. You know, of all the fish I've fished, and I've fished all over the continent, and I've gone for every species of fish, the one fish that stands apart to me is a landlocked salmon. And they're not in very many places. It's really tough to find a place where you can really depend on the population to survive because yep. it's tough for them to survive. Yep. The fact that there's so much food for them here is... And i got to tell you, you have got to hook a salmon for yourself to understand what I'm saying. Those fish come out of the water, and they don't just come out of the water. They come out at a speed like nothing I've ever seen. Of all the fish I've ever caught, they just almost like rocket across the surface. They come from depth. Um, when the thermocline sets up here, it's about 42 to 52 feet. That's where the lake stratifies. That's where the most highly oxygenated water is. That's where the smelt are. And when you hook one on a short lead, behind a downrigger, they come right to the surface. Um, we've had them come right 
as high as a man stands in the transom of the boat to get a good look at a 10 pounder and most times he's gone. See, this, th th this is what fishing dreams are made of. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here beside a bucket of Atlantic salmon. Who would have ever thought? I sure never thought that this would happen today. But it's pretty interesting because when you look at these fish, they look very similar to a trout, but there's differences. The shape of their tail, the rows of their teeth, and I think it's important for a fisherman that comes out here to Tupper Lake to realize when they catch a fish just what they're catching. Might seem like a crazy thought to you, but trout and salmon look very similar. And uh, the only difference I can really tell you, forget about the teeth, forget about the tail, you hook into one and you'll know immediately, hey, I've just hooked into a rocket. It must be a salmon. What we're trying to do is show you what one of these young landlock salmon look like. Uh, they look a lot like a trout. They have the spots and so forth. Are they as slimy as a brown trout? Yeah, it's about the same amount of slime. So this is the size of the salmon that are going to be going in today. You can see how beautiful they are. And it won't be long when this fish, when they reach like 15 to 18 inches, they become unbelievable. I'd like to talk a little bit about what you need to know about catching these fish. And this is just a basic, but it's kind of important to know. Landlocked salmon, uh, they can be caught either near the surface this time of the year because they're going to be chasing smelt along the surface, especially near the tributaries. And one of the ways that I love to fish for Atlantic salmon is with a fly rod, either a slightly sinking line or a, or a floating line, and a tandem Atlantic salmon streamer. And here's two patterns that you got to remember. Gray ghost and a green ghost. They're both fantastic. But let me tell you a little fly that I've caught a lot of salmon on, and that is a hornberg. If you've never heard or seen a hornberg, look it up in the fly book and you'll see. I don't know what makes it so appealing to salmon, but they will hit it. Salmon swim fast. They fight incredibly. And I'm, I promise you, if you ever can hook into them, you'll be hooked for life because these fish are different than any fish I've ever caught. And I have caught salmon all the way up into the Arctic, really. Uh, so I've had a lot of experience catching these fish, but I don't think any of those places can excel what's available here with both the lake trout and the Atlantic salmon.